to go. Oh, wow. First of all, if you haven't watched part one, then go and check it out in the link below. But for those of you who have, here's a brief recap. In part one, me and my friend Charlie drove to Oban in Scotland in search of some of the best that British wildlife has to offer, in particular, otters. When we arrived, Charlie went on a solo adventure for a couple of days on the Isle of Col, whilst I stayed on the mainland in search of those elusive otters. Let's do it. I unfortunately failed to see any, but I did see my first wild mink and white-tailed sea eagle. I also managed to photograph a lion's mane jellyfish, which was very unexpected to say the least. That's the one. Sadly, things then went a bit south when we realised that we may not be able to make it over to Mole because of the bad weather forecast. It all ended with me and Charlie waiting to see what tomorrow would bring and deciding whether getting the ferry across would be worth the risk, if we were lucky enough to have the option. Oh boy, the wide load is back. How was it? It was insane. We had some... Oh, the first day was like a mill pond, beautiful weather, perfect conditions for spotting sharks. Whoa! Yeah! Oh, it was just jam-packed. Second day, things got worse. And then, yeah, sadly today, the weather blew us off, but it's all right. This is the nature of getting in the sea. What can you do? Picked up Charlie. We are on the ferry, heading over to Mull. Gonna rendezvous with uh, James over there. I'm not sure what his plans are for this evening. I think we're just gonna head straight to the otters, straight see if we can find them. some. The whole team's gonna be together soon. Exactly, the and there's been so much planning and preparation, and we're here, and the elements are trying to batter us. They are us, trying, they are trying. trying. But we, we're tougher than that, right? We've got perseverance. We've got on our perseverance. Side. Weather hasn't got that. Weather. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's really testing us right now. Ah, sunny Scotland. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, we did it. There was a small break in the weather, so we took the gamble and made it over to Mull. The first thing on the agenda was to meet up with this man. James Rogerson. He's a wildlife photographer friend of mine who takes some very enviable images to say the least. But perhaps more importantly on this occasion, a man with expert knowledge of otters. With limited time on the island, we jumped straight into the car to follow James to our first potential location. Just driving, following James at the moment to the next otter location. Hopefully we'll get in one at, l at least before it gets too dark to put up the tent. Um, it's very hard not to be distracted on the road because there is some stunning scenery. As James had the 4x4 and driving had become noticeably more tricky, it wasn't long until we decided to leave my car at the side of the road and climb in with James. The plan was to see if we could spot any signs of movement as we drove along the edge of the lock. James had briefed us earlier on the types of shapes and movements we could see, so we had a pretty good idea of what to look for. But as the evening drew to a close and we still needed to put up our tent for the night, we came to the conclusion it wouldn't be a case of beginner's luck today. However, as we turned the car around, Charlie spotted movement in a distant field. Wow. Oh, that's exciting. I just saw two logs and I was like... That was an awesome spot. It's only a little bit of barbed wire, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so excited! <laughs> so, as I was explaining, initially we stopped thinking they might be heading back to a halt. We don't want to disturb them, obviously. But, it now looks like they just came up for a drink and have headed straight back down to the water. So, we're using our right to roam and have gone across this field, including with this massive backpack on, and let's see if we can see them. But oh my god, otters, man! Ooh. Okay. Someone who just wants to be involved comes flying in. Luckily, 
actually both me and Charlie are able to understand that. I see them. So we saw our first coastal otters in a farmer's field of all places. The farmer himself actually joined us a bit later to chat about them as he'd been watching them for a few weeks and wanted to learn more. I can't figure them out, they've been, been together for so long them two. Sadly though, after setting up my camera I only managed this shot, which was not what I was after at all, but at least it was proof and a memory. So with the light starting to fade, we found a suitable spot and set up the tent for the night. Though as much as it was needed, I didn't get the best night's sleep. I'm in my car. It's one o'clock in the morning. There's 30, 35 mile an hour winds outside. In like a summer tent. Um, I've just said enough is enough. I can't, at least so loud. I recorded some audio. <laughs> So now, I'm sleeping in the car. Simple as that. Um, hopefully I'll get some, some kind of sleep before we're up at sunrise at like five o'clock in the morning to photograph otters, hopefully. <sighs> Time to go to sleep. Day two on Mole started with clear skies, beautiful scenery and a gentle breeze. Wait, no, what I actually meant to say though was that's what we hoped it would start with. It actually looked a lot more like this. Regardless, we were here to see otters, so we climbed into James's car once more and headed along the shore of another lock. Having just about risen at 5am, we spent the next few hours scanning the seemingly endless shoreline of the lock. I'm not going to lie, at this stage in the trip, things were starting to feel a little bleak. Yes, the weather was expected because we were in Scotland, but the stress of getting over to the island in the first place, the sleepless night before, and the fact that our first experience of otters was a considerable distance away was starting to make it seem like there would be very little chance of coming away from the trip with anything at all. Though little did we know, we were about to have one of the most unforgettable wildlife encounters of our lives. After climbing back into the shelter of the car, it started to sink in what had just happened, and our spirits were noticeably raised. I worth it? We, yeah, worth it, worth it. So worth it, but I definitely think we need to thaw out for a minute. <laughs> you got a bit of peanut butter on your face. Do I actually? Yeah. Left, other side, sorry. Ah, 
got it. <laughs> Sign of a good lunch. I'm leaving that in. Sign of a good lunch. As we explored the island for the remainder of the trip, we were able to fully absorb its beauty, and despite not seeing much else, there was nothing that was going to bring us down. Oh my days! Oh, that was so good. <laughs> we had just spent time with an otter, which was totally relaxed in our presence. This is an animal that was not too long ago on the brink in the UK, largely thanks to persecution. Spending time with it like we did made me realise something. There's a lot to be sad about in the news at the moment, and undeniably a lot of progress still needs to be made, especially in terms of the natural world. But seeing this otter thriving and clearly never having had a bad experience with humans is a great reminder of how far we've come. There's been massive efforts to bring them back, and otters can now be found across the UK. And they aren't the only reason to smile about how far we've come. In Britain alone, beavers, red kites, pine martins, osprey, boar, and even white-tailed sea eagles are all examples of animals that are back to their best, or at the very least, on the right path. Perhaps as understanding and respect for nature slowly grows, and conservation efforts continue, there'll be more and more chances for people to share unforgettable moments with wildlife just like we did with this otter. I think it's fair to say that 2020 so far has been a bit of a year from hell for many of us, but perhaps in times like these it's a reason to look at and appreciate what we have in the present rather than just fixate on all the negatives. So in an effort to try and spread some positivity, why not leave an example of a conservation success story in the comments below? And if you enjoyed the video then please give this a like, share and subscribe. Also, don't forget to turn on the bell to make sure you don't miss any future uploads. Lastly, as always, thank you to my patrons for supporting these videos and helping to make them possible. Thank you for watching. Look at that hair. That is, that is a hairdo. <laughs> <that> <laughs> you look like Mr. Bean. <laughs>